What do these people have in common? Well, they're all named Teeth. That's a pretty cool name, isn't it? And yeah, I'm aware, I'm only saying that because it's my name. But quick, do you think the name Heath is interesting? Do you think it, the name Heath has a deep history? Well, let me show you. So we all know in 1066, the Normans, who were a pagan mix of Viking and French, took over the Anglo-Saxons. Their leader, William I, or the Conqueror, decided in 1086 to get a census on his new populace, naming the census the Doomsday Book, and one of the largest early human records of names and life. This is where we find the town in Derbyshire called Leheath. This name, Leheth, was the original name for Heath, but we st still have a few stages to progress through to get to Heath in its current form. Another way Heath came around is the Germanic version of Sorbian Meath. A family from Leheth left Leheth and gave the surname Leheth, which was where we were introduced to the first Heath. Not as a first name, but as a surname used by one Godfrey Bravio de Heth, born in Lil Saxham in 1259 and was married to one Sarah Saxham. He died in 1293. Another thing we know about Godfrey is that he could have seen the Second Baron Civil War in Chesterfield, Derbyshire, which took place around 1266 when he was 11. By 1276, the 100 Royal Census had been finished, which was requested by Edward I to take note of all landowners in England and part of Wales. And around that time, there were two different last name Heths, one living in Kent and one in York. By 1299, we meet the first Heath, to not spell Heath Heth, but the modern, modern spelling H-E-A-T-H Heath. This is Geoffrey and Henry Heath, where they appear in a court article about Jeff transferring his rights to Richard and Alice, who we do not know much about. Now in 1501, Nicholas Heath was born in London, and he grew up to be the Bishop of York. It was probably related to the York Heath. He was actually imprisoned and stripped of his priesthood, when Mary I was put on the throne, she released him and gave him a massive job bump. Then Elizabeth didn't renew his license, but they were still really good friends, and Elizabeth I visited him while he was old and ill. Around the same time, 1501, Heath A. Coningsby was born, who was the first person to have Heath as a first name, as far as I can know. Unfortunately, not much I can find is known about Coningsby, so if you want to do your own digging, you're welcome. Just drop the information in the comments. Now, by 1798, there were multiple Heaths that we know of, with a book by William Heath called Heath's Memoir of the War, which was William's recount of the American Revolutionary War. He was a part of the Continental Army and served under George Washington at the Siege of Boston. He was also the commander of the Eastern Department, responsible for defending New England from British incursions. He also served as a delegate to the Massachusetts Constitution and several office positions in Massachusetts, such as Governor, or state senator. In 1833, the name Heath was used as the title of the book, Heath's Book of Beauty, which was a woman's gift book, one of the first ones ever, which gave beauty tips. Interesting, I know. And also around this time, another book called Heath Flowers was published by William Glenn. Now, let's talk about another Heath, Edward Heath, who served as UK Prime Minister between 1917 and 1974. He was educated at Ramsgate in York, and was the person who led the British in the EU and lost to Margaret Thatcher in the 1974 election. He died in 2005 in Salisbury. Finally, the famous Australian actor Heath Ledger, who played in the movie The Dark Knight as the Joker, which gained him an award for Best Supporting Actor. Unfortunately, in 2008, Heath Ledger passed away at the age of 28. Now I heard all of that, don't you agree? The name Heath does have a deep history. But you didn't hear it from me. You heard it on the grapevine.